Get instant access to your winnings with Cash Card Plus, Paddy's brand new card, available to use at ATMs, online or in shops. TNC Supply, 18 plus, gambleaware.co.uk. You are very welcome to the Racing Post Weekend Postcast. It's Bruce Millington, Mark Langdon, James Milton and Paddy Powers, Ed Quigley. And we're looking ahead to two really mouth-watering Sunday-like live Premier League offerings. It's Liverpool versus Manchester. Kicking off at 1.30, Everton v City. And then at 4 o'clock at Old Trafford, Man U v Liverpool. What a great double bill that is. Let's see if there's any decent bets. We'll start with the Everton game. And we'll start with Paddy Power's latest show of betting. Yeah, so um, Everton are 31-10. to 10, The draw is 11-4 and City are 17-20. to 20. What's going to happen here, Ed? Uh, well, I suppose the pressure's, as I mentioned already, like Coom, the pressure's cracking up on, um, or cranking up rather, on Cooman after last week's cup defeat. Um, City have only lost uh, in away games. They've only lost to Liverpool, Spurs, and Leicester this season. You'd forgive them for losing to Liverpool and Spurs. They're great A sides. Um, Everton's home form is all over the shop. They've, they've, but they've only kept clean sheets against Stoke, West Ham, and Southampton. And City have only failed to score against Spurs and Liverpool the two games they did lose. So I think City to win and both teams to score 12 to 5 makes a massive appeal here. And this is this is that that that, that bet's actually clicked in 50% of City's away games. So 12 to 5 looks big to me there. Mark, uh, I, I think Man City are, are too big here. Um, Bruce, I mean, they're going off of roughly the same price that Arsenal did, and nobody can tell me that Arsenal are at the same level as Manchester City. I, I've got Man City, are, you know, a fair bit better. Aren't they um, just a bit hard to read, though? I mean, I was, I was there the other night when they took West Ham apart, but there are some really disappointing performances in among they the good do. ones, aren't they? They, they, they I mean, they, they, they do chuck in the, the odd stinker, but, I mean, they, they're still... Um, yeah, they're not that far behind Chelsea, considering they've been to White Hart Lane, they've been to um, Anfield already, they've been to Old Trafford. Um, yeah, they, they've got a lot of their hard games um, out, out, out of the way, uh, and I just don't rate Everton. Um, but uh, you know, they beat Southampton, but that was Southampton's third game in six days over the New Year period. I, I just write that one off. The, the win against Stoke came courtesy of the. Um, penalty that went in off the post and then hit the goalkeeper and went in. I mean, against Arsenal, I mean, the, the gunner should have been out of sight before they allowed Everton back in. I mean, Koeman said the performance against Liverpool in the first half was the best since he'd been there. They didn't have a shot on target in the game. I mean, they're missing their most important midfielder, Idrissa Gay, who's at the Africa Cup of Nations. Will the hippie fill in for him? Well, he, he may well do. I mean, but they were turned over, weren't they, by Leicester in the FA Cup. I mean, Koeman's come out, he sort of called out the, the owner and, and, and whoever's signing the players that they're not moving quick enough. I mean, they've got a real problem in goal because I don't think uh, Robles or Stecklenburg are good enough to, um, to be playing Premier League. And they're up against what's still the best attacking unit in, in the Premier League. I, I, I had City, um, I, I can't remember exactly what price I had them because my notes have been left by the desk, but I definitely had them shorter than this to win Are you going to be lumping on? I, I, I've got that down as um, uh, definitely the, the, the best Sunday bet. Um, uh, and maybe the best Sunday one for a while, actually. It's been quite tricky recently. Jolly good. James, what do you think? Well, yeah, Mark's uh, obviously made his, his feelings on Everton quite clear. You you rightly say that, that City are a bit hit and miss. I just don't trust either of these sides, really. Um, but I, I think um, late goals is the way to go here. I think more goals in the second half could be um, could be the one. Everton's last two uh, games have been nil-nil at half-time and then... Both produced uh, three goals in the second half. Small sample uh, there. Pauline, <laughs> Pauline wouldn't have that at all. But their, their last seven Premier League games have all featured a goal in the in the last five minutes. Um, oh, wow. So, uh, um, uh, you know, the, whatever way the game goes, you can see kind of City pushing on if, it, if it's tight or or, um, or if Everton um, are, are pushing for an equaliser, then City can hit them on the break. I, I, you know, I, just, I don't like either of these uh, sides from a betting perspective, but that, that could be you know the way what to the, go. You know what the market thinks of Everton, the fact that they drifted against <laughs> Hull a couple of weeks ago. I mean, they you know, opened up about 10 to 11, went off about 11 to 10, I think maybe even a bit bigger. So um, I'd be surprised if there wasn't money for City um, come Sunday morning. Right, get your bets on early then. OK, Man United versus Liverpool, one of these showpiece occasions in English, nay, world club football. And how do Paddy Power bet, Ed Quigley? Yeah, so uh, United are 6-5, to five, the draw is 23-10, and Liverpool are 5-2. to two. We'll stick with you for a verdict, Ted. Yeah, I didn't see the game now last night, but I read that um, yeah, Liverpool looked or were pretty poor last night. Acarius kept them in the game, surprisingly. Uh, I think they'll be doing everything to get Joel Matip fit for this game because I heard Clavin was pretty poor last night. I actually just, I really fancy United here. I mean, 6-5 to five obviously kind of Liverpool. And I think 
I think if the season started like say five or six weeks ago that United would be rated better than Liverpool now like I, I just think they're really starting to click Mourinho does know what his best team is now they're je- they're, they're gelling as I say and uh, I thought they were even like going back a few a few weeks ago I thought they were unlucky to only get a point against Arsenal I thought they should have probably got a point against City as well when they were at home earlier on in the City I, and I also think that uh, Mane is a far bigger blow to Liverpool than Bailey's absences to United yeah I'll be United straight up at 6-5 to five here What were me. you doing last night that was so so important you missed that match I was, I was trying to get back from England with the high winds that's oh yeah what, that's, that's right what, yeah you had a bit, a bit of a flight from hell didn't you you were yeah, supposed I to did, land yeah. in Leeds and ended up in Liverpool didn't you ended up in Liverpool yeah trying to get to Halifax um, yeah it wasn't ideal I've got a fear of flying now anyway from Reiner oh the new Dennis Berg Dennis O Berg camp <laughs> yeah. uh, Mark will Liverpool <clears throat> be flying high here or will Man U continue their steady progress I, I think that the team news is absolutely massive in this game I mean uh, Matip I know you're not a fan of Henderson but he's the captain of the team and the midfield seems to function better when he's in it uh, and Coutinho is he fully fit probably not I mean if they're missing those three players again um, I, I would say Manchester United have to be the selection because although Liverpool are second in the Premier League they wouldn't be second if there was no Mane, Coutinho, Henderson or Joel Matip so you can't I don't think you can look at the, the league table um, necessarily because you know it would look completely different had they had the, the, you know the, those four players not been available, then I might I might come out with your least favourite expected. The league table doesn't lie, man. <laughs> well, I mean, I think Liverpool are. I think mean, uh, Liverpool are um, justified in where they are in the in, in the table, but they just wouldn't be there if they wouldn't uh, if some of those players uh, have been missing for more. They've the got season. no chance of winning the league, have they, Liverpool? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, well say, no, I wouldn't say no chance because I'm not I'm not mad on Chelsea. I, I, I think mean, Chelsea are still mentioned it the other week, I still think they're a bit short. I, I can see the others coming back into them. And I, I mean, can you rule out United? I, no, you can't. I, no. I don't think you can. I've I mean, backed United and Tottenham at massive prices. I, I mean, I, I just think that I agree with what Ed says, really, that this is a game where your home advantage um, could, could be quite important for United. have got a very, very strong record against Liverpool, particularly in the Premier League at Old Trafford. So, um, yeah, I'll go for a home win, although I'd be more confident if Liverpool are missing their best players, as seems likely. Is it possible that if the team news comes as you'd like, you might be doubling up your winnings on City with United, or would you just uh, leave a small chip on the table? I, 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 well, I fully expect City to win, um, so yeah, it'll just be a small chip. Um, because, no, the, the difference in scale of the, the two fancies is, is quite vast. Really. OK, James, what's your big match verdict? Yeah, I'm, I'm going for United in this one as well. I think you know they've won 12 of their last 15 in all competitions, and, and the three that they haven't were... The draws against Arsenal that Ed mentioned, you know, they battered Arsenal. Oh, they were ridiculously unlucky. Uh, yeah. Conceded late on, conceded late at Everton and and uh, and West Ham as well. Drew one all and and had uh, had had plenty of chances to win the game. So I think they really are kind of starting to purr now. And suddenly, you know, from they look look quite uninspired in the early weeks of Mourinho's reign. Suddenly they've got all sorts of options in midfield and and going forward. And I think as Mark's mentioned, you know, Liverpool potential absentees are, are crucial. Um, and just the last the last couple of weeks for Liverpool, they had the the two all draw at Sunderland, Defoe scoring two penalties. Then obviously the the much changed team in in the FA Cup, draw at home to Plymouth, and then outplayed by Southampton in in the League Cup. And you know all, none of those results in isolation are, are disastrous, but it's just that just that sense that that they've gone off the boil a little. I mean, bit. I would say they beat City. I mean, they were pretty good defensively, weren't they, when they beat uh, Man City? I don't think City put in a great performance, but that would. Um, you know, just to give Liverpool um, supporters and backers some hope. I mean, I, I thought that was their best defensive performance of the season when they, they deservedly beat City, I thought. OK, give us a quick blast of Premier League betting before we go, Ed. Um, so Chelsea are 8-11, to uh, Liverpool 5-1, uh, to one, City 7-1, to one, Tottenham 12s, Arsenal 14s, United 16s and the rest don't matter. OK, weekend plans, Ed. Will you be able to watch all the games on Sunday? Uh, I will be able to watch all the games because I'm working. So yeah, that, that's my weekend plans pretty much. Week, uh, I'll be working and punting. That'll be my weekend anyway. Will you be having a first score of multiple? Uh, I might do, yeah. I'd, uh, like, I'd definitely be back in some of those uh, ones I mentioned there earlier, like um, Hazard and, and Costa, Dutch, and all that. Yeah, I know I will, and there'll be s- a few in Europe as well, hopefully. Excellent. Mark, what have you got lined up? Uh, Saturday, d- uh, taking the wife out uh, for a rare treat. Um, to uh, I'll give it a mention, you never know. I might get a better table. Pasha in, uh, in Braintree, very, very nice <coughs> Turkish 
restaurant with a cocktail bar. Frank Bruno recently celebrated his birthday there. So. Is there a picture of him on the wall with his arm around the proprietor? <laughs> uh, well, it's, <laughs> Alongside it's not on, one of Kenny Lynch. It's not on the wall anymore, is it? Because they can just get it out on Instagram and yeah. Twitter. So, I mean, like you've got like Ray Parler sort of giving the thumbs up and, and stuff like that. And then Sunday, sports editor, and then in for um, talk sport as well in, in the evening. So, very busy. That's a long day, isn't that, it? That is, that is a long day after You might actually cocktail. get a result there, you know, because Brendan Duke, who does the racing postcast, he mentioned that he was taking a girl on a date I last remember the Friday. Chef. Oh, was that the chef? Or was that a different yeah, one? Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, unfortunately, the date went completely tits up. But <laughs> the, the good news was that the proprietor of the restaurant had heard the postcards and sent a <laughs> bottle of champagne oh, over. Oh, lovely. So Remember. where are you going again? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Pasha in Brain Triessic. Yeah. And it's got a very good reputation, apparently. It has, yeah. Uh, recommended to me by um, one of um, uh, the Racing Post's sort of most prominent Essex figures in, in the restaurant scene, Damien Mears on the advertising right. team. He, he knows all the good places. James, have you got any baby equipment that's defective at the moment and needs replacing? Do you want to give mother care a quick time? <laughs> I did have some issues with the, the brakes on my uh, my daughter's <laughs> buggy the other day, but I think I've rectified it. I good. think it was just leaf related. Uh, She's out of hospital now. Isn't she? <laughs> and what have you got lined up for the, uh, uh, the I'm weekend? I'm working on Saturday and then I'll be uh, frolicking in Dulwich Park on, on Sunday, weather permitting, with oh, my, my daughter. That'd be building a snowman, I think, by the time <laughs> That's not I good, that. is it? OK, gang, thank you very much indeed for your input. Thank you very much for listening, stroke watching. If you like our shows, don't forget to subscribe and rate us on iTunes. And we'll be back next week when we've got another mouth-watering Premier League game to preview, which is Manchester City versus Tottenham. The Football Postcast in association with Paddy Power. The place to bet on football in play with a huge special every weekend.